Let's go to Louisville for perspective locally right now as Chris Mack and Louisville. uh, It was reported by Seth Davis from The Athletic that they are in the negotiation process of a separation. He hosts the Red Zone on KRD 790. It's Nick Coffey joining us. And Nick, you originally reported on Twitter early in the afternoon that the Board of Trustees and the Athletics Board at Louisville would be meeting on Wednesday about personnel, among other things. So now it seems like a foregone conclusion that Chris Mack and Louisville will be separating. How have we gotten to this point? Uh, Honestly, I would say... How we got here is just, it, there, there were some steps along the way, I'd say, in the last 18 months that that, qu- it, that, it, that seems like a long period of time. But for Chris Mack, I think he got off to a, a good start at UofL. I feel like he was a little bit ahead of schedule. They made the tournament their first season. Uh, that, that roster, I don't think, was super loaded. Uh, they also had a, a few signature wins that season, including against the Michigan State team that ended up going to the Final Four and knocking off Duke and Zion and that great team. And then uh, in year two, uh, they had another great year. He had this team in in the top uh, top top. They were ranked number one, in fact, for a few weeks. And uh, then the COVID pandemic hit. There was no tournament, and then at that's when things kind of started to slowly just kind of fall apart for him. Uh, they were really hit by COVID in a major way, uh, like a lot of teams were during the twenty twenty one season. And uh, they were the last team left out. They didn't make the tournament, and that really got fans. I think. I mean, it's understandable. Louisville basketball has high standards, and if, you are, if you've got a team and you can't make the field of 68, that's just not good enough in the eyes of most fans. So this was going to be a big year for Chris Mack. He knew that, and with that, he went out and made some decisions to make some changes to his staff. And I was actually talking to a, a staffer earlier, and, and it seems as if the beginning of the end was really how the Dino Gaudio situation played out. As a lot of folks know, uh, Dino Gaudio was charged with extortion, but Chris Mack was punished by the university for not – not going through the proper human resources protocols, not having somebody present. Uh, That ended up being an entire mess that caused Chris Mack a suspension of six games and, of course, a big fine, nearly a quarter of a million dollars of his salary. And then the season started. He wasn't there for the first six games. The team got off to somewhat of a rough start. And unfortunately for Coach Mack, they started to play worse once he kind of took over. And uh, I never thought we'd be here where they would be making uh, this move and, and a mutual parting of ways during the season. But that's really how bad it's gotten, John. I mean, uh, the, the, the lack of fans showing up to games is something Louisville basketball is simply not used to. Uh, it's all unraveled, and uh, I, I, I don't know this for certain, but I have a feeling this was not a one-sided thing. I think this is one of those things that it truly is mutual, where Chris Mack is just kind of ready to move on, and clearly the school wants to go in a different direction. But uh, with UofL... They're in, they are in a very, very unique spot. Not only are they now going to be potentially looking for a new basketball coach, they don't have a full-time athletic director. The school doesn't have a full-time president. So uh, chaotic times at UofL, and I feel like each time we've talked over the years, John, I've been saying the same thing. It is wild here. You can't make some of this stuff up. It really is wild. And you look at this situation here from a, a financial standpoint, Louisville owing Chris Mack in the now $12 million, but – I've been told by a couple of sources that this is a type of situation where from Louisville's perspective, they believe with level two violations hanging over Chris Mack that they could fire him for cause, which is why it sounds like that this separation meeting, this settlement of some sort is occurring and and that there may be a, a meeting halfway here on what exactly amount of money he's owed. Are you hearing the same? Yeah, so the the the, the contra- he had a contract that clearly uh, accounted for two things that if there was a punishment that he had nothing to do with that came down due to the previous regime that he ha- he would have his contract extended but in the same contract it was in there that if level 2 violations occur while he's leading the program he could be fired with cause. Now, we still don't really know if that what, what's going to play out with that. They're going through the IARP. They've been waiting forever to get some kind of closure. So, yes, it, it, I think UofL could wait it out, but by the time they're wanting to potentially need – or by the time they feel like they may need to make a change and just fire him, that process may not be sorted out yet. So at that point, they'd still be on the hook for all of his contracts. So that's what makes me think this is clearly a – Chris Mack knows his situation, knows where he stands. And, uh, again, I, I, I have a feeling he was willing to just say, hey, let's talk about this and see if we can't both come to an agreement that makes sense for both of us. The Dino Gaudio situation was – Wild, to say the least, for for something like that to happen. Maybe not wild by Louisville standards, but I think we all thought in the moment, like, 
really? All this is going down and, and these, this level of violation, this level of, of money and all because there wasn't an HR person there. But here's the other thing, Nick. Chris Mack fires the guy that was a favorite in the locker room, and that was Luke Murray, who goes right to Connecticut and now is, is seemingly flourishing there. Like that, to me, just shows you how much this imploded. Yeah, absolutely. I think the decision to make a change to his staff was something he was encouraged to do at the time, given the fact that they had shortcomings last year. If you listen to the conversation that was recorded between Dino and Coach Mack, one thing Coach Mack mentioned a lot was was staff chemistry. That was a real issue. Now, I don't know who's to blame for that or, or, or if, the, if, if the, 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 the correct decision was to make a move, but that was surprising. Dino, not as much. In fact, I was told there was a situation where Dino could have remained on staff in some capacity, but not in, that, in, that, in the role he had before. And then with Luke Murray, I think it was essentially – we're moving on. We're going to go in a different direction. And uh, I will admit, I, I didn't anticipate that having the impact that it did. Still don't know exactly what kind of impact it had. This is a new team that the majority of the guys you're seeing on the floor for Louisville didn't play for those two coaches. But clearly, this uh, th this – the suspension and the new, you know the newcomers and and the new staff essentially it's just it's just led to sort of a big mess and uh, there's no doubt I think the downfall was the the dismissal of his two coaches how that played out leading to a suspension and uh, yeah I mean that 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 was certainly a big factor and I I, I don't know if Chris Mack would 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 be candid if asked, but I, I wonder if there's any regret about how that was handled because there's no doubt, you know, obviously there's, there's a lot to the story. I'm sure that maybe even we don't know, but on the surface, that looks like something that backfired on him. Nick Coffey is our guest from 790 KRD in Louisville. He hosts the Red Zone every single day on that station. He's got a great pulse of all Louisville athletics. So now Mike Pagies will step in here and coach the team. I want to hear from you if you had to pick one or two candidates that are at the top of the list now that are also realistic, where would you go here if you're the Cardinals? Man, I, um, I've been pondering that for the last couple of days, even before I knew we'd be in this situation, because I didn't expect that we would be. I just didn't see a scenario where midseason you'd make a move. And again, I think it just got to the point where Chris Mack is so miserable and the school clearly sees this as a potential cheaper way out. So as you can see, I'm avoiding your question with it come, when it comes to the candidates because, you know, I, Louisville fans are throwing out some names that I personally don't believe are realistic. One being Bruce Pearl. Obviously, Louisville, I would say most would agree Louisville is probably a better job, a better program given the history. But Bruce Pearl has turned Auburn into a program that is number one in the country. He could potentially win a national championship this year. So uh, I think he is the type of coach that does really value a, a blue blood kind of program. I don't know if you want to call Louisville one of those, but they're clearly, I think it's a top 10 program. Most would say it's a top 10 job for sure. So I think that's all you have going for you is that, that allure. But I just, these coaches, and you know this, John, it's not always just about, okay, well, this job's better than this job. If coaches are in great situations, it's going to be, it's going to take something very enticing for them to leave. And Louisville right now, despite it having so many resources and it being such a great job, they have got some circumstances that make it not a great like what I keep battling some of our listeners is well hey this is Louisville people will walk to this job well this Louisville isn't the old Louisville until they can fully move on from this cloud that has hovered and we don't know I mean I just it's going to take a coach I think that might just look for a new challenge so Bruce Pearl's the name you're hearing Nate Oates is another name Eric Musselman but I think all those three guys in my opinion are are in pretty comfortable situations that that, that I wouldn't be shocked if they considered it and they were flattered, but they said, you know what, I'm pretty good here. I'm building something. And, and again, keep in mind, all three of those coaches I just mentioned, John, are in the SEC, and the SEC's investment in basketball in the last decade is like something I never thought we'd see. So I don't know how realistic those names are, but those are the ones fans are mentioning. Another name that I just got off the phone with somebody about is John Beeline at Michigan. I think he's, he, he, he's, he's a guy that would – he, he's safe. He's a guy that clearly is very successful. He's, a, he's not exactly young and, and energized, but he wins at a high level. I think by the, when he, in my opinion, when he left the college game to go to the NBA, he was one of the more underappreciated coaches in the game. So that's a name that I just recently heard. But right now, we can put these names together. We can throw them out there, try to figure out what makes sense. But there's not a full-time athletic director at UofL. There's not a full-time president. So until, that, until those positions are filled, it's hard to really get a feel for who they're going to go after. Great perspective on a deep dive on a really rough situation. It's a mess, think, man. <laughs> oh, it, we thought rock bottom had hit. 
Louisville continues to redefine it. You can follow him on Twitter at the Card Connect, and we appreciate Nick Coffey joining us here on Sirius XM Channel 84. It is Field of 68 after dark. Nick, thanks again for the time. Thank you, John. Take care, brother.